When I was growing up, we used to joke that no matter what conversation we would begin, when we were all sitting down having dinner together, it would always end up being about shit. <laughs> and this was mainly true. And the reason was that my father worked in the field of sewage treatment. And so wastewater was a big family interest. <laughs> and I grew up with an awareness of what happens to the water when I flushed the toilet or had a bath. Our family holidays would usually involve a visit to the local sewage treatment plant. <laughs> or depending on where we were, open sewage canal. At the same time, I grew up wanting to immerse myself in beauty and trying to capture it in painting, in drawing, in making things. And this awareness of wastewater and desire to create beauty continue to be major influences today in my life working as an artist in the field of water restoration. I am inspired by ecological restoration, by the blending of art, nature, and technology, and by interdisciplinary collaboration. I believe that beauty and creativity are fundamental to solving ecological problems and that we need a design that is in harmony with nature, cyclical and regenerative. As an artist, I create paintings, photographs, collaborative artworks, and I work for Biomatrix Water as part of the team on water restoration projects around the world. So this is a project in Cochabamba, Bolivia, and the wastewater from a college was polluting the well nearby. And so working together with the students, we built a constructed wetland or reed bed for cleaning the water. And it's using the power of nature, the plants and the microorganisms that live on the roots of these plants to clean the water. And the flowers that grew in this wetland were so beautiful that the students would pick them. And this is Carmen and Esperanza picking the flowers and they would bring them to a local cafe and exchange them for a meal or a snack. And I think of this as a real cycle of beauty, from wastewater to flowers to food. I call it deep beauty. This is Andhra Pradesh, India, and here the wastewater from a hospital was treated in a constructed wetland and then sterilized using ultraviolet light and used to irrigate hundreds of orange trees. Collaborative artworks can be a fantastic way to involve local people in restorative projects. And it was a pleasure to work with kids from this local area in order to paint collaborative murals on the walls of the hospital. One of these murals was a large mandala and in the water droplets that were a part of this mandala, each child had painted an aspect of the water cycle that was particularly meaningful to them. We also created a mural on the wall of the toilet block, which featured a mural of the toilet block, and which showed <laughs> the uses of water within the toilet, and then how it flowed from there to the wetland and then to the irrigation of the orange trees, showing this cycle of beauty from wastewater to oranges, deep beauty. I believe that we all have a need for beauty, especially the beauty of nature feeds our soul. But too many of our creations are superficially beautiful. And when you look deeper, they are in fact ugly. If you look at the birth of so many products with the extraction of natural resources, it is ugly. And if you look at their death ending up as rubbish on the rubbish dump, it is ugly. But in deep beauty, the birth is beautiful. There's an attention and sensitivity to the origin of the material. Whenever possible, it's reused or recycled. And it's beautiful in death. In the way of nature, it feeds new life. It's not rubbish. So deep beauty is about the cycles of birth, life, death, and rebirth. 
It's about the biological nutrient cycles of carbon, phosphorus, and nitrogen, and the industrial nutrient cycles, as explored by industrial ecology and the Cradle to Cradle Institute of metals, plastic, and glass in a form that they can be recycled or upcycled, disassembled or reassembled. It's about seeing through time to the past and the future of a creation in order to recognize its beauty. Many of the most deeply beautiful things that I have ever seen have come from out of the most ugly situations. This is a canal in Manila, and what you see is floating plastic rubbish on the surface of the canal. And through a process of river restoration, this is how the canal looks today. And those are engineered floating islands on the surface of the water, which help to clean the water. So it went from being a canal like so many canals in the world today, full of sewage and rubbish, to being a green, vibrant, healthy, living ecosystem. This project was done by the Pasig River Rehabilitation Commission, spearheaded by Gina Lopez. For plants, the nutrients in sewage are a fertilizer, and they grow huge. Whenever possible, begin at the beginning. This is the headwaters of the canal, transformed into a water park. The transformation is the most profound for the people who live alongside the canal. This used to be a health hazard. The children would come home with diarrhea. There was the threat of disease. But today, the people can enjoy living alongside the waterway. They have picnics and karaoke sessions. This is Jeanette and her family. And she's a local resident, and she decided to become a river warrior. And she joined together with many other local residents of the canal to become stewards of this waterway. And if they see someone throwing rubbish into the canal, they'll stop them and they'll explain why that's not a good idea. They have nets, and if they happen to see rubbish that's gotten into the canal, they will collect it. And I think that having the involvement and participation and support of local people is part of what ensures the success of any restoration project. It was a real pleasure to meet many of these river warriors, to hear their stories, and to photograph them. This is Julia, and she's taking medicinal plants from her own garden and planting them into one of the floating islands that are an important part of the water treatment of this canal. The kids, they love to be involved. For them, the whole thing is very exciting. And it will really benefit the next generations the most. I took the photographs that I had taken and exhibited them in a show in London called Not a Drop. And in this show, many artists had created artworks about the state of water in the world today. And I showed the photographs in a cascade shape with the before photos at the top and the after photos at the bottom and then images of the people and their relationship and interaction with the waterway throughout. An artist can bring a unique perspective and a spotlight on beauty into public projects. They can notice relationships, ask questions, and evoke dialogues that can lead to a more holistic and sustainable outcome. I'm particularly interested in the interplay between art, nature, and engineering. This is a project in Salo, Finland, and it was actually commissioned as an art project. And we worked together with New York artist Jackie Bruckner and Finnish artist Tula Nikolainen to create a floating island that was in itself considered to be a sculpture. We called it a biosculpture. It also served as a nesting place for black-headed gulls. And working together with students from a local technical college, we built fake rocks for the birds. And the floating island helped to clean the water, which was sometimes polluted 
by stormwater runoff. And so this is an example of a project that combines art and nature and engineering and participation and collaboration that serves multiple needs and multiple functions. And I think we need more of this type of creativity. I believe that we all have a longing and a drive to express our creativity. Creativity has been fundamental to our survival as a species. It is what has allowed us to solve problems, to invent new tools, and it's led to the creation of civilization, of cities, of wealth, of products, of services, of art. If we don't express this creative longing, it can lead to a state of wanting and desire that we seek to fill through consumptive behavior. Creativity has been key to our success, and it, in of itself, has largely been an extractive and consumptive form of creativity. And we've gotten to the point now of overusing and exploiting natural resources. So I believe that creativity is still fundamental to our survival. But what we need is regenerative creativity. To regenerate means to renew, to revive, to restore. A regenerative system makes no waste. In his recent book, Designing Regenerative Cultures, Dr. Daniel Wall talks about how asking the right questions can lead to regenerative design solutions. So how do we express our creative longing in a way that is regenerative instead of extractive? Well, one idea is to look to waste, to rubbish, to degraded places. These may even be inside yourself. Many artists would say that some of their best work has come from out of their most difficult experiences or darkest times. Remember that flowers love shit. And I think that they're all the more beautiful because of the transformation. This regenerative creativity doesn't need to be art. It spans the creative matrix from making a garden, building a business, designing a product or a service, but it's helpful to ask when making decisions, is this regenerative and is it deeply beautiful in its birth, in its life, and in its death? I like to say to my three-year-old son, Jasper, in nature, there is no rubbish dump. The waste of one species becomes the food for another. And this is an example of a project that uses this principle to meet our needs. This is called the Geodome in Manchester College, Withamshaw campus. And this project combines aquaculture with vermiculture and fungiculture in symbiotic relationship. So it's educational and the students get to benefit because they can eat the vegetables, the mushrooms, and the fish. But what about with plastic rubbish, which is such a problem in our waters today? Well, I don't have the answer for you, but I was thinking about this a lot and worrying about this a lot, and I wanted to create an art project about it. And so I gathered rubbish that had washed up on a local beach here in Scotland, and in my studio, I stuffed it into netting, and I made a floating island. And I was imagining, what if we could see this rubbish as a potential resource? Instead of needing to collect it and ship it away, what if where it is, we actually netted it and made it into floating islands? Imagine if the seeds, the mangrove seeds and other seeds that are floating among that flotsam might actually take root and grow into living islands then perhaps instead of birds eating these tiny bits of plastic and ending up in their tummies, instead would have a place to land on their long journeys. And so this project was curated by Thomas Ermacora and exhibited at Lime Wharf Gallery in London. 
And here you can see this prototype of a small flotsam island and also some artworks that were inspired by the same theme. In our art, design, and technology, there's so much we can learn from listening and observing nature. How does nature clean water? What can we learn from this in order to improve our technology? Biomimicry can be incredibly useful. Along with the public projects, I have a studio painting practice. And I find that this helps me to go within, to be quiet, and to listen and to observe nature. In ecological restoration, we provide the stage and nature performs. We're always meeting halfway. And in my painting, I like to work on the floor, pouring paint onto the canvas and then painting into that flow. So the paint is speaking for water. And then I'm bringing to it my unique style, my brush strokes, my impulse. I find that the work informs the paintings, and the paintings inform the work. And I'm finding a dance between what is nature and what is my relationship with nature. And these are some examples of paintings that were inspired by this theme. I would like to invite you to actively engage your creative power in a way that is regenerative, which flows intentionally with the cycles of nutrients and materials. Remember that creativity has been fundamental to our survival and still is today. I invite you to broaden your vision, to see through time in order to recognize, to design, and to create deep beauty. Thank you.